clear, I mean, um, Agatha can come today. So she might come up today and we'll be recording it to send it to her. So. Highs and lows. My low is this. <laughs> My high is at four. So we're, we're trying something new, trying to operate PowerPoint with, with Zoom and be connected to another screen is a new 
frontier for me. So, so we're gonna, okay, I see we've got, okay. We're recording it, so. But we have an opening prayer and then we'll start talking. Who wants to we'll say this? Let's we'll say the opening prayer again. Dear God, we confess that we sometimes hide from you by the attitude we give you. Help us trust that you will always find us when we need you. Keep reminding us that you are the God of mercy we can rely on. When we break rules or make poor choices or do evil, Bring us back to you when we give forgiveness and heal us separately. Amen. How many of you have, let's go around the room. How many of you have broken a rule? All right, anybody, okay, anybody want to share with their girl with the rule they broke once? You did what? But that's a rule, right? Um, how many of you have ever, like, I don't know, chewed bubble gum in class and that's a rule that you can't chew bubble gum? Or a clock in class? That's a rule that you can get out of the house. Run in the hallways. Yeah. Have you ever been called out by someone?
But before we get there, I'm going to talk a little bit about some other words we gathered. Okay. Who wants to read the first word up there for me? Okay. Okay. Okay, I need two volunteers. Okay, Bryce, you stand right, right here. You're gonna play God. You're God. Okay, I need one of God's creatures. Who wants, okay, Leo? All right. You stand right, right here. And you face God. Okay. Actually, can everybody see them okay? Okay. So this is God. God is looking upon Theo because God, God loves Theo, right? You got to give, give him a face like I love this. I love this kid. This is this is a child of God. Okay, Theo, you you love God. You're looking you're looking at God, and you're you're you guys are you guys are connected right now. You guys are in a relation, what we call a relationship. Theo happens to be not just a, what we call, in a right relationship with God, but he's also a human being. We're talking about the human condition. And human beings do what? They break rules, but more importantly, even worse than that, they sin. What happens when we sin? We actually turn away from God, so turn around and walk this way a little bit, up over to here. When we sin, we actually literally turn away from God and we turn into ourselves. What does God want us to do? He wants us to be in a right relationship with who? With God. We're not always good at doing that, right? Who had to die in order for us to be back over here to go? Turn and face God. And then pretend like you're giving each other for a love. You don't have to. But that's what Jesus does. He brings us, he brings us together in that right relationship. But when we sin, we okay, you guys can when we sin, we literally it says separation and alienation. Alienation means that we are literally what the was doing was walking away. Alienating himself. When you alienate from someone, it means you turn away or turn off. All right, judgment. Who wants? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So when God was standing here and Theo was standing here, and we didn't have God to have a judgment, but Show us the kind of face, God, do you think God would make when the old turned away from you? Yeah, see, okay. That's judgment. Does that feel very good when, when God judges us like that? No. What do we do? What do we do to each other all the time? Look at that little squirrel. See, he wants to get so, what do we do to others all the time? Judge. Remember the word judge. Like, how do, how do we judge other people? And maybe not you, you know, maybe you have other people judge other people. That's a safer way. A certain face you want to show us. Do we have a goal? I have a 17 year old stepdaughter in my house. And she makes she makes the eye roll look and you know that when that eye roll, you, you know there's some judgment going on. And usually it's towards one of the other hands in your eye or parents. So anyway, okay. We do a lot of things. We judge people as well. Their intelligence, their body shape. Political values, the color of their skin, how much money they have, what else? 
And we also judge other people for what we think is right or wrong. Never mind what God does, but what we think. We have to remind ourselves that God is doing what? So God is doing what? Okay, next one. Separation. Charlie, what are you Yeah, so we had the whole act of Theo moving away from God, and that also happens in our own relationships where we're like, I don't want to talk to you. Talk to the hand. You know, that whole thing. That happens in families all the time. It's called cutoff, separation, silence treatment, that kind of stuff. Okay. Mercy. Yeah, okay. What's the most important word in that sentence that Bryce just read? Okay, what's okay, that's probably the most important word. What's the second most important word? God's mercy. Okay, forgiveness is really important too. What's the third most important word? Okay, that's important too. Okay, what's the fourth daily. word? Daily, daily, daily. That's exactly right. Every single day we are renewed in God's eyes. Every single day you get up and you uh, go brush your teeth, take a shower, wash your face, wash your hands, you're using water, right? Every time you use water to cleanse yourself, think about how God right now in that moment is, is also forgiving you, washing you, cleansing you. That happens all the time, right? That happens all the time. And we need to be reminded of that because what? We constantly do what? The whole thing with you. We constantly try to walk away from what? God and our neighbors. Okay. We're going to read the story. Okay, here's, uh, okay. Am, am I a bad person when I make a poor choice or break a rule? No. Even if I think it's not a good rule? Ooh, there's a tricky one. Sometimes we make bad rules. What were some bad rules? Slavery was a bad rule, wasn't it? How about women not being able to vote? That was a really bad rule. You can't vote without that. Huh? What are some other what were some other in history, some other bad rules? You ever heard of new laws? Like they have literally laws in some communities that they call new laws because they're really weird. Like you can't kiss in public. Or you can't, huh? I don't know. I'm there, there's other rules like, um, you, like you can't shoot gun and walk at the same time. I don't know. You, you can't walk on the streets while having your mom. There you go. There might be a good reason for that, though, actually. Not all rules are good. But we're going to talk about. I want you to open up your files. Genesis. Where's Genesis? Extra? Genesis and go to Genesis 3. Uh, there's 51. Page 51. Alright. This is another one of those longer stories. I'm going to read it. Unless any of you. I can talk really loud. Can you all hear me? What? 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 I can't hear you. What? He's not. 
the penalty and the punishment was was less than what it was going to be. So what what did you do? You did a swear. Usually, usually in my house, if the kids if the kids come forward and they admit what they did, usually there's a lot more games, right? What what are Adam and Eve trying to do? Are they trying to own what own up what they were? No. No, no, no. God's not following them. He says, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all the wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Is that why we don't want to stay? That's a pretty good accent. Yeah. So, like, in the, the apple, like, take a bite of an apple and turn it into cash. Wow. That's a good point. That is an excellent point. But we think of it as, I think of it as a snake. How many of you like snakes? It's probably the same. It's probably the same thing as the same thing like the big girl and snakes and the I don't know. I've seen some of the snakes in this whole lot of snake thing. I don't know. Seriously? Was it alive? No, I don't know. Well, no, if you. If, no, so if you kill a snake, because this has happened to somebody in my family, they got bit by a fire truck, and they found a snake, and the firefighter that came, they chopped the head off and they buried the head. Why would they do that? It's just so long. Yeah. Even if it's dead. So anyway. Okay, to the woman, verse 16. No, no, 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his head, and he will strike his heel. What do you think the word enmity means? It's a weird word. It's a big word. Like a separation. What does it sound? En? Sounds like enemy, right? So enmity is. Enmity. Enmity means adversarial separation. So, like two people who aren't going to talk to each other. If they ever come in contact with each other, it's going to be a fight. So it's going to be between the snake and the man. He's either going to kick the snake or the snake's going to fight the man. That's the same on the streets. It's on site. It's on site? Okay. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. And then in the voice of Theo from the fires of the grid, thorns and thistles and shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. You, know, you can just imagine the nasty, the nastiness here. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Where do you hear that sentence at? Oh, uh, just something. I'll give you an answer that happens in a worship service once a year. It begins like Ash Wednesday, and the imposition of the ashes, the pastor, the pastor puts ashes on your forehead, and the pastor says, he or she says, I, actually, I welcome that, that's a good thing. So, uh, it is the bad, the bad, the bad. I don't know if it's the same bad, but there is always a bad. I'll keep it with all of us. I don't know if that's another brand of thought. I'll be right back. I'll just put it in the center. 
Okay, so um, I actually I guarantee you have enmity between you and the It's Okay, all right. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. This is my universal sign of law for let's bring it back. Okay. So Remember that you are dust, and dust you shall return. It speaks about not only the fact that we are mortals, we are mortals, that we come out of the ground, that we are stardust, but also that we are, unfortunately, sinful. Raise your hand if you're a sinner. I know. It's one of the hardest things to, you know why we gather in church? You know why we gather together as sinners? Because we, because we have a word of proclamation that says, to get into that right now in the story. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made garments. I want you to underline that in your Bible. If you have a pencil, I want you to underline verse 21. You can highlight it, you can underline it, whatever you want to do. Garments. Just read, underline the whole, the whole verse 21. Hold it. Mark it up. This is the most important verse in this entire story. Everybody have a mark? Now I want you to write in somewhere in the margin of your Bible the word grace. G-R-A-C. Why don't your sister You can also write the word forgiveness. So in this entire story, it's it starts out with they have no idea that they're loved, that they're naked. They eat of the, the, the fruit of the tree, which is not an apple. <laughs> and then it might be a fig. It might be a fig. And then they realize what? They realize that they're naked. All of a sudden, they have this knowledge. Did this literally happen, or is this kind of maybe an explanation for maybe how some things happen? Where did evil come from? If God, if God created the world, and all of it, and it was good. Where did sin and evil come from? So, like, off topic. So, I'm sorry, it was, so, as a king, right? They're saying that Satan is the serpent, right? Well, we're not there yet, but the serpent's not good. The serpent's not good. The serpent has no more story. They say Satan's the serpent. And, so yes, they say that he fell from heaven. This, where does that happen? The archangel of Michael. Yeah. Wait, so it probably is Satan. He's like, no, he probably is like, I probably see him as a man on the whole so he's like, he's like, he's the one that got here, he's struggling, and like, he controlled the mind. So, Somewhere, said, somewhere, somewhere, said an evil snuck in, right? Why did I have you go in verse 21? Or why is that the most important part of the story? It's the last part of the story. And the last part of the story is the word what? Forgiveness. So even when we sin, bad choices, when we break rules, when we do whatever, it might be the last word is always a word of forgiveness. You have been redeemed. Now that doesn't mean that you can continue to live, continue to do what? To break the same rule. Why not? Because God wants you, remember Theo, God wants us to be in that relationship with God. And if 
we're in that right relationship with God. You know, he wants us to know, he wants us to be able to know the difference between right and wrong. But more importantly than that, God wants us to know what? That we are clothed. We are clothed. In the New Testament, and I won't, I won't bore you with this right now, Paul talks, the St. Paul talks about being clothed in garments, being clothed in Christ. What do you think that means? To be clothed in Christ. To be clothed in righteousness, love, and forgiveness. Right? So who, who puts the clothes on us? God. Alright. What time is it? Okay. All right. There's another story. Go to verse. Uh, let's go to chapter four real right quick. I just want to read through the story because um, Cain went to table. So Adam and Eve have some, have some children. This one's great. This one's great because how many of you have siblings? All of you have two. Yeah. I'm a child. Do you know there are no famous people that are a child? No. Do you know there are two famous people? Eleanor Roosevelt. Original 
sin, meaning it originates from it originates from the world. And because we live in it, if if a fish lives in water, it's what? It's wet. If the fish cannot be not wet, it has to be in the in the in the fish wall, right? Uh, if we eat it, it's yeah. But that's not a lot. You never know. So I have a fish for you that I haven't But we live in a fishbowl. We, we are like fish in a fishbowl. We are not ever going to be not wise. We are never going to live in, in a place where there is not sin. You cannot master. You can't No matter how hard we try. Okay, moving on. Alright. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go to the field. Let us, here, here, buddy. Let us go to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and did what? He killed them. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? So right there, it's a what? That's a lie. And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground. So we have the action is what? Cain kills Abel. And now what? The action is followed by God's. Remember that word that we had up there? Judgment. Action, judgment, and now we have. So what's the judgment? It says, you are cursed from the ground, which is opened up. Its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Will you till the ground that will no longer yield to you its strength? You will be a fugitive and wander on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. How many of you have ever been remorseful before? So, so now we have action, judgment, remorse. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Anyone who needs me may kill me. And then the Lord said, What? So that I'm happy. What? Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance, and the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one came upon him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of the east. Okay, so what is the action? The action is Cain kills and his brother Abel, followed by a judgment. What's the judgment? You can't hear all anymore. And then that is followed by what? So it's followed by Cain. Remorse. He's, he's authentically sorry. He doesn't know what to do. He's really afraid for his life. And then the last word in the story is what? It's the very last word. Um, he is marked. He's marked with a mark. And what does that mark? What does that mark do? The text. We're all marked with a mark. Remember where that mark comes from? It is a It is a baptism. There you go. There you go. So, in baptism, you were given a promise. You were promised to be forgiven because God knows that we live in this, this fishbowl of sin. And the next thing that happens is you, the pastor, takes one. And he marks it up on his forehead. Yep, put a cross right there. Yes, they just talked about it this last year. He said, buddy, this is your cross. Smart. And then the boy. So, time I'll bring all that stuff here so you can see it. But the pastor says, you are marked with what? The cross of Christ. You are marked with the cross of Christ. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. So when you are marked with that cross, I tell parents, every, almost every single time, unless I forget, I tell them, 
you're trying to get a tattoo. It's invisible, but it's never going away. Because when God sees that mark on your forehead, it's like he looks at it. He looks at Cain. He looks upon him. Even though Cain did something really towards that. God still loves Cain. And God sees that mark. And God says, You are in death. So not even, not even death. Not even in death can you take away from you. And so that's, we've all been marked. So here are two awesome stories about the human condition. One of the cartoons of the cartoon. The cartoon says, What's more appropriate for the apple? See, it's that apple festival. It's not a It's not Okay, so go to the cartoon. Why are why are they worried about the parents? They realize that they, that's not nobody likes to be in the kids. They're self-conscious, right? About who they are. And not just physically, but we are all vulnerable in our life. I mean, I had this reminds me of I I ran into an old math teacher at in high school. I was scared to death of him because he would write out a sign to a sign in a long board and he would turn around and go, Oh, get what's the answer? And you better know, you better pay attention to what, what the answer is. But if you were talking in class, he wanted to, it was a bad for me. He was a little bit of a he would chuck, he would chuck, actually chuck the, uh, chalk at you or the eraser. I've never had that happen, but I was scared of that, that I would have the wrong answer. Anyway, my whole point is, every time I sat in a class, I felt vulnerable. I felt like I, I tried to make myself as small as I could do because I didn't want the teacher ever calling on me. And because if I did, I thought I was going to get the wrong answer. And anyway, that's kind of like being naked. You don't want to expose them. Adam and Eve are exposed. They know, they realize that, that they're in danger. And that's not a comfortable place to take it. Uh, Okay, what changed? What changed when Adam and Eve failed to respect the limits of God? What changed? Do the world and so on. All of a sudden, they had an awareness. They had, you ever hear the, the phrase, ignorance is bliss? What does that mean? Sometimes it's better off not to make some things. That's why I just kind of stopped watching the news lately. I just to really just catch the news on some of these kids. And it's so hard because it's everywhere. But sometimes, sometimes life is less stressful than I'm worried about things. But I understand it wasn't a school shooting today down in Texas. Okay, then the final question what choices are you making? What are potential consequences? You know, the choices we make in life are really hard. It can be sometimes life and death, right? Um, sometimes there, sometimes the choices we make, that's true. Sometimes we make choices and it's just, it's just consequences of that day. Um, sometimes we make choices and it hurts other people. How many of you ever made a choice before that it hurts other people? Um, and then, what do you have to do? Uh, apologize. So there's an action. Sure, there's a judgment. There's an apology, and then hopefully that person does what? Forgives. Forgives. 
So in these stories, the, the last part of these stories is the word of grace, the word of forgiveness, the word that reminds us that we love, that we've been marked with the mark of God, and that mark is always uh, a positive mark. If we had more time, I would have us look at our student books, but I'm going to have to take these. We may have another chance to look, uh, talk about what page two is in any of these student books. Uh, how do we say by grace and faith and not by your words? We can be quite opportunities to talk more about that in this class. But if our lives, if getting to heaven, let's just put it in a very simplistic way, if getting back to God requires us to make all the right choices in life, do you think you can do it? Um, not only can we do it, but we established earlier in the video that sometimes, sometimes there are rules. Okay, let's do a quick show. Yeah. All right, I'll let you lead this. Ever since creation, as humans, we have the history of faith, truth, fear, love, and seed, making that fire. We have the same thing in the garden, the rest. Who paid the ultimate price? Yeah, it's that whole the whole thing of walking away from someone or, or especially God. When God sees us making poor choices, God looks for someone more mature who tends to be blind, does not leave us, gets angry and punishes us. Charlie, what do you think? Good job. King was He still died. Yeah, he still died. Okay. <laughs> he, he eventually dies, but. Wait. All right, so it's not what we do. It's who we trust, true or false. Ah, that's a tricky one. We didn't really talk about that, but. If we if we if we turn away from God, what are we doing? We're putting more trust in who ourselves and less trust and less faith in. There you go. Sin is one of the certain cultures and certain past records true or false. And that's right. Everybody sins. And no matter who you are, if you live on planet Earth, you sin. And I don't care if you're Jeff Bezos and you can go outside of Earth's orbit, you're still you can still sin up there. All right. Huh? And out of shape. Our parents all the earth and grace. You all know the answer to this, and you're being recorded, so you <laughs> Just do it. All right. All right. Let's close with the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be
Thank you.